a 3 cm long 2 cross 2 mm rectangular cross section aluminum fin thermal conductivity K equal to 237 watt per meter Kelvin is attached to a surface if the fin efficiency is 65 percentage the effectiveness of this single fin is 30 24 8 39 the answer is option D 39 here solution is given here so effectiveness of the fin is equal to efficiency of the fin into surface area of the fin divided by cross sectional area of the fin okay so that is equal to efficiency of the fin into PL divided by AC that is perimeter length divided by cross sectional area for uh, rectangular section perimeter equal to 2 into B plus Y cross sectional area equal to B into Y so just substitute all the given data from the question so you will get the effectiveness of the fin is equal to 39 so the answer is option D 39 next question is with the increase in the length of the fin, fin efficiency decreases, increases, remain unaffected, first increases and then decreases. The answer is option A decreases. With the increases in the length of the fin, fin efficiency decreases. So you can relate uh, this relationship. Okay, So fin with the length of the fin by using effectiveness and the efficiency relationship okay so that is effectiveness of the fin equal to efficiency of the fin into pl divided by ac okay so the length of the fin is directly proportional to the effectiveness of the fin and inversely proportional to the efficiency of the fin if the length of the fin increases effectiveness of the fin increases efficiency of the fin decreases so from this question what they have asked with the increases in the length of the fin fin efficiency decreases so option a is the correct next question is the fin efficiency is defined as the ratio of actual heat transfer from the fin to the heat transfer from the same fin with an adiabatic tip the heat transfer from equivalent fin which is infinitely long the heat transfer from the same fin if the temperature along the entire length of the fin is same base temperature the heat transfer through the base area of the same fin. The answer is option C. The heat transfer from the same fin if the temperature along the entire length of the fin is same base temperature. Okay, so this is the direct uh, formula of the efficiency of the fin. Okay, so that is efficiency of the fin equal to Q fin divided by Q max. Okay, so that is equal to actual heat transfer by fin divided by maximum heat transferable by fin if the entire fin area were at base temperature okay if uh, the entire area is at base temperature it is considered as maximum heat transferable by fin that is efficiency of the fin equal to q fin divided by q max and also for infinite long fin efficiency formula is efficiency of the fin equal to 1 divided by ml for short fin insulated efficiency of the fin equal to tan h ml divided by ml next question is for an infinitely long fin efficiency is given by 1 divided by ml 2 divided by ml 1 divided by 2 ml 3 divided by ml the answer is 1 divided by ml for an infinitely long fin efficiency is given by 1 divided by ml as we already discussed okay for uh, infinitely long fin efficiency of the fin is equal to 1 divided by ml for short fin insulated n that is efficiency of the fin equal to tan h ml divided by ml so option a is correct next question is a fin will be necessary and effective only when k is small and h is large k is large and h is also large k is small and h is also small k is large and h is small the answer is option D. K is large and H is small. Fin will be necessary and effective only when K is large and H is small. So that is for the condition for fin to be effective are given here. That is it should have higher thermal conductivity. Okay, So the thermal conductivity should be large. Heat transfer coefficient should be small. Thickness of the fin should be small. Okay, so this is the conditions for 
the fin to be effective. Next question is which one of the following configuration has the highest fin effectiveness? Thin closely spaced fin, thin widely spaced fin, thick widely spaced fin, thick closely spaced fin. The answer is option A. Thin closely spaced fin. Which one of the following configuration has the highest fin effectiveness? Thin and a closely spaced fin. Because you can uh, uh, ex uh, understand this question by using what uh, effectiveness formula. Okay, so effectiveness is directly proportional to the square root of perimeter divided by cross sectional area. Right. Okay. So if uh, we are using more thin fins, what will happen? Instead of one thick fin, we can divide it into many thin fins. What will happen? The increases it increases the perimeter to the cross sectional area ratio. Okay, so the effectiveness increases, so heat flow rate uh, with the fin increases. Okay, so why uh, this closely spaced is the closely spaced fin that is the pitch, uh, the distance between the two fin is should be what closely spaced. It is actually governed by the thickness of boundary layer. Okay, so that develops on the surface of the fins. So the answer is thin and closely spaced fin is correct for the higher effectiveness. Next question is Biot number signifies the ratio of convective resistance in the fluid to conductive resistance in the solid, conductive resistance in the solid to convective resistance in the fluid, inertia forces to viscous forces in the fluid, buoyancy force to the viscous forces in the fluid. The answer is option b conductive resistance in the solid to convective resistance in the fluid biot number signifies the ratio of conductive resistance in the solid to convective resistance in the fluid so these are all the very important points uh, related to biot number in designing the fin whether it is effective or not okay so biot number is the ratio of conduction resistance to the convective resistance okay so actually if you consider the fin contraction resistance is happening in the solid right okay so that is the fin area so convection resistance in the fluid medium okay so the option b is correct so next question is a thermocouple in a thermoval measures the temperature of hot gas flowing pipe hot gas flowing the pipe for the most accurate measurement of temperature the thermoval should be made of option A steel, option B brass, copper and aluminium. The answer is option A steel. A thermocouple in a thermoval measures the temperature of hot gas flowing the pipe. For the most accurate measurement of temperature, the thermoval should be made of option A steel material. Okay. So this is this concept okay so the thermocouple is used for estimating the error okay so in the value of temperature measured by a thermometer dipped in a thermometer well the theory of extended surfaces is very useful the thermometric error okay so you can uh, relate by using this relation that is t minus t infinity divided by t naught minus t infinity equal to 1 divided by cos h ml so to reduce the temperature measurement error the ml should be large for this the it should have a large value of h small value of k long and thin well should be used right so in this they have given the materials different materials for accurate measurement okay so you can relate with the thermal conductivity value so for uh, given materials i have given uh, the order of thermal conductivity is here uh, the lowest value of thermal conductivity is for what? Steel material, right? For accurate, that is, if you are using the small value of K material, it reduces the temperature measurement error. So it means it the accurate uh, measurement of temperature can be done by using small thermal conductivity value materials. So the answer is what? Steel material. If you choose steel material, it will give the accurate measurement. So the answer is option A, steel. Next question is, the response time of a thermocouple is the time taken for the temperature change to be 
phi of the original temperature difference 1 divided by 1.414 of the original temperature difference 1 divided by e of the original temperature difference 99 percentage of the original temperature answer is option c 1 divided by e of the original temperature difference the response time of a thermocouple is the time taken for the temperature change to be 1 divided by e of the original temperature difference Okay, so here I have given the relationship, okay, so time constant relationship and uh, the response time of a thermocouple uh, relationship is given here. So that is T minus T infinity divided by T naught minus T infinity equal to E power minus tau divided by tau star, where tau star is the time constant. If you consider one time constant, tau and a tau star is same, so it get cancelled E power minus 1, okay, so the response time is equal to what? 1 divided by E that is equal to 0 0.368. So, if you just uh, uh, replace this term here, what you will get? T minus T infinity equal to 0 0.368 T naught minus T infinity. Okay. So, that is the response time that the temperature change to be 1 divided by E. So, if you calculate this value, you will get 0 0.368 that is 0 0.368 of initial temperature difference that is original temperature difference and also time constant formula is rho vc divided by ha and tau star is proportion that is inversely proportional to the response this is very important many mcqs okay so comes under this okay so the time constant versus response time if the time constants increases the response time decreases okay Next question is the response time of a thermocouple is the time taken for the temperature change to be 100 percentage of the original temperature difference, 50 percentage of the original temperature difference, 36.8 percentage of the original temperature difference, 18.64 percentage of the original temperature difference. The answer is option C, 36.8 percentage of the original temperature difference. The response time of a thermocouple is the time taken for the temperature change to be 36.8 percentage of the original temperature difference. As I already discussed, right, this is the temperature change, okay, so that is equal to 0 0.368, that is 36.8 percentage of the original temperature difference, that is the initial temperature difference is this one, okay, the temperature changes is equal to the 36.8 percentage of the original temperature difference. Next question is the time constant of a thermocouple is the time taken to attain 100 percentage initial temperature difference, time taken to attain 63.2 percentage of initial temperature difference, time taken to attain 50 percentage of initial temperature difference, the minimum time taken to record a temperature reading. The answer is option B, time taken to attain 63.2 percentage of initial temperature difference. The time constant of thermocouple is the time taken to attain 63.2 percentage of initial temperature difference. Okay, so don't get uh, confused here. Okay, so the what they have asked the time constant for a thermocouple to attain. Okay, so to attain is if you just cancel it with uh, one or uh, you, if you consider 36.8 percentage, just subtract with 100 percentage. What you will get 63.2 percentage. Okay, to attain uh, 62. Point that is 63.2 percentage of the initial temperature difference that is the time constant of a thermocouple and the last question is for quick response of a thermocouple its wire diameter should be large the convective heat transfer coefficient should be high the specific heat should be high the density should be very small the answer is option b the convective heat transfer coefficient should be high for quick response of a thermocouple the convective heat transfer coefficient should be Hi. Okay, so you can uh, relate by using the time constant formula. The response is inversely proportional to the time constant. That is, is directly that is the response is directly proportional to H A divided by rho V C. So instead of V A divided by V, you can write the characteristics length that is L. Okay, so response is directly proportional to H divided by rho L C. Okay, so H is convective coefficient 
rho is density, L is the characteristics length and C is the specific heat. Okay. So, the response is directly proportional to H, inversely proportional to density, character, characteristics length and specific heat. Okay. So, from this, if the convective heat transfer coefficient should be high, the response should be high. That is, for quick response, the H should be high. This is the option B is the correct answer. All the best.